Welcome to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping Orange County. With your host, Don Camber. Hello, live from the OC Talk Radio studios at UCI's Beale Applied Innovation Center. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber with another great guest positively impacting our community. Today, I welcome Make a Wish Orange County and the Inland Empire Vice President of Mission Delivery. Melissa Gallagher. The organization creates life-changing wishes for children with critical illnesses. Thank you, Melissa, for being on Impact OC. Thank you, Don, for having me. Melissa, please explain the criteria for whom you grant wishes. I'd be happy to. So we grant wishes for children that are facing a life-threatening medical condition. The children have to be between the ages of two and a half and before they turn 18 years old. The kids have to be diagnosed with a critical illness, which is a progressive, degenerative, or malignant condition that has placed the child's life in jeopardy. They cannot have received a wish from another wish-granting organization. Our biggest misconception is that we only grant wishes for children that are facing a terminal illness, and that's not true. We grant wishes for children that are facing a critical illness. Due to medical advancements, there's been a lot of opportunity for these kids that we previously would consider terminally, to be living longer lives. 70% of our kids will live into adulthood and will receive wishes that will change their life. What kinds of illnesses do they suffer from? So normally it's critical illness, like I mentioned, a progressive degenerative or malignant condition. So it can be anything from cancer to uncontrolled epilepsy to different types of tumors, other types of terminal illnesses or critical illnesses. Explain the referral process for wishes. I'd be happy to. So a referral can happen, uh, can come in from five different sources. The first source would be the child themselves can refer themselves to have a wish. They can do it directly online. Or it most of the time it will come from a social worker, doctor, child life specialist, so their medical community. The parent can refer the child or a a family member that has the medical history. So it's really simple. They go on to our website, which is www.ocie.wish.org, and they just click on the button that says refer a child, and they'll put some information in there. Our team will work directly with the medical uh, team to make sure that we are able to grant a safe wish for that child. Explain the kind of wishes that you grant. So we always like to kind of share that there's basically five different types of wishes that we grant. The first wish is what you hear a lot about on television or social media. That would be to meet, um, and it would be like to meet a celebrity or athlete or to meet president even. We've granted all those types of wishes. So that's the first bucket would be to meet. There's also a bucket that would go under our type of wish that would go under to go. And that would be your places to go, Disneyland, Disney World, Hawaii, San Diego, wherever it is, um, but where they might want to go. Then the, it, we have an option uh, to have, and that would be your more tangible items. So some kids love technology, so they might want a new gaming system or gaming computer or um, a new, some type of device, any kind of technology or shopping spree, those kind of things. So that's to be, to have, to go. Uh, And then the last one, I'm sorry, is to be. And to be are those wishes. The wish that we first started with with Make-A-Wish was to be. When somebody wants to be something, they might want to be a police officer or they might want to be a DJ like yourself or they might want to be a celebrity or singer or dancer, those kind of things. So we create that experience for them. The last type of wish is our a wish that is so heartfelt and it's a wish that we don't always see, but when we do, we just know it's so selfless. And that is when a wish child might choose to give. So we've had kids over the years that have chosen to give for their wish. So I think back to one of our wish kids that really um, filled my heart with joy was a young man named Matthew. And more than anything, he wanted to give back to the hospital where he was treated. So when he was in the hospital, he was a teenager and there wasn't a lot of things to do for teens. So when it was time for his wish, he wanted to give back to the hospital and get some items like gaming systems and musical instruments and things that the kids could do that were more age appropriate for him 
for him and his peers. So we were able to do that, work with the hospital, find out what they needed, and be able to give those gifts in his honor. So those are the five types. It's to be, to have, to go, to meet, and to give. Explain the process to create a wish. So to create a wish, it just really depends. We do our very best to really get to know our kids and our families and really learn a lot about what their interests are, what their wish is, what we can do safely. And always, you know, that's our first, number one priority is keeping our kids safe. But It's really creating an experience that is unique to that child. So we grant a ton of Disneyland, Disney related wishes, but each child is different. So if we're granting a Disney wish, we want to know what makes Disney so special for them? What is their favorite character? What is What do they want to see there? Have they been there? What do they love the most? So then each you, each wish is unique to that child. If it's, say, a room redo. So say a child wants to have their room redo, redone. So we, we want to know, what do they envision that looking like? What is it, when they close their eyes, what do they, what do they see? So is it the walls are painted a particular color, the furniture is different, the curtains, whatever it is, to make that wish come true for them. So it's really about listening to our kids and figuring out what their interests are, what what they envision the wish look like, looking like. For you and me, sometimes we hear a wish and we think typical of this would be this, this, and this. But in a child's eyes, that could be very different. Like it could be not at all what we're thinking about. So is it a team of people that work on a wish? Yes, it very much takes our whole team to work on a wish. So from the beginning, it's working with the physicians to find out a little bit more about the kids and make sure they qualify for a wish. Then it goes um, to getting everything going. And with our volunteers help, we're interviewing the kids to find out more about them. Then it gets to a coordinator and it has to get start the planning, get started. We work with a lot of vendors in the community, whether it's if it's a room redo, we might be working with an interior designer to try to help us with that vision. Uh, we work with our partners at Disney to grant Disney wishes. It just depends on what the wish is. And then it takes our development team and our, the rest of our team to help us raise the funds to grant these wishes. So everybody on our staff, uh, we don't have a huge staff, but the staff that we have works on every wish and we couldn't do it without our volunteers so we have an amazing team that really makes wishes come true so you have to raise the money in order to grant the wish yes and how do you do that so raising money is you know we're very blessed to have a lot of really amazing partners in the community but you know that's something that we have to continually work on because there are very many uh, worthy causes in our community but we work on, we do a lot of different events throughout the year. We work with our individual donors. Uh, we work with new companies. We try to get companies involved in helping us grant wishes locally to our kids. All the funds that we raise here in Orange County in the Inland Empire stay in Orange County in the Inland Empire. So we raise funds right here in our local territory. So we work really hard to grant, uh, raise money and grant as many wishes as possible. Can you give us an example of an exorbitant wish? So I would say absorbent would probably be, you know, our travel wishes because of inflation have went up. Uh, you know, we don't, I wish we had a, a plane or every flight was free, but it's not. So with that being said, we have to raise funds or get uh, ways that people can help is by donating airline miles to offset that cost. Because when we send a family, everybody, when you book a trip for yourself, it, it's more now than it used to be. So I would say mostly our most expensive wishes are usually travel related. So give us an example of a travel wish. So I'll tell you a few locations that are very popular. So we do wishes to Hawaii, uh, Disney Alani. We'll eventually bring back international wishes. So those are all very costly wishes. So when we grant a wish, the families have nothing to worry about. So we cover all of the expenses for the family. So with a wish, it is the flights, the hotel, the expense money, getting to and from the airport, everything is included. So when you have a family of four or five or six, that's kind of costly. So I'd say those are our more expensive wishes. It's very worthy and the kids absolutely love it. And it's something they may have never experienced before, but it does get rather pricey. That's why we have to work hard to raise our funds so we can make sure and grant those wishes for those kids. So again, can you explain one adventure at least a family went on? Sure. Um, so we have um, 
we did a wish for a young man named uh, Truman was his name or is his name. And he wanted to go to Hawaii and he had never been there. And it was the most important thing. He wanted to see sea turtles. And so we booked a trip for them to go. He was able to see the sea turtles, spend the quality time with his family. He had been home a lot due to his medical treatment and not being able to, with the pandemic and everything happening, there was a lot of time when he was just home without seeing people and, and you know, be, doing the things he'd normally do. So they were able to go to Hawaii and swim with the doll, or swim with the turtles and be able to do all those beach activities and make those memories, which are lifelong memories for that family. So that was one example of a, a wish that we granted that was pretty remarkable and they had a wonderful time. So I'm so glad we were, had that opportunity to grant that for him. And it was a kind of a surprise for the wish person? So the wish is chosen by the child, but it was a surprise when we were granting it. So he knows he knew his wish was to go to Hawaii. He just didn't know when. So we had the pleasure of surprising him and his family to go to Hawaii. And understand when you grant wishes, you think of everything that the child is going to see. Yes. So we work hand in hand with our ch other chapters throughout the country. We are a global organization. So we're not we're all we're throughout the whole United States as well as globally. So we have make a wish in all over the world. So when we are planning a wish for another destination, such as Hawaii, then we work with the chapter in Hawaii to help plan that wish to make sure that we do everything just perfectly. And what was the family's reaction to the wish? They absolutely loved it. He was still talking about it months after when we saw him. And recently, even when I saw him, uh, he was telling us again about how much he loved it and how much you know it meant to him to have that time with his family and be able to see those turtles up close. And they, they're just, they love the trip. Give us some other examples of wishes. Sure, I'd be happy to. So just recently, I'm going to give you a brand new one we just granted last week. <laughs> um, so we had a young girl. Uh, she's here from Orange County, and she loves performing arts. So she's always been in plays. She was always the kid that loved putting on shows for her family and doing all kinds of um, actress stuff around the house. And so she has recently graduated high school and um, she her when it was her turn for her wish, she said the only thing she wanted to do was go to the Tony Awards. If you guys didn't know, it just passed. It was maybe one or two weeks ago that the Tony Awards happened and she was able to go. So that's a very special, unique opportunity that not everybody has that opportunity. She looked like a celebrity on the runway. She looked so beautiful and she got to meet some of her idols, she is, you know, would love to do theater for the rest of her life. So it was something that, you know, was that opportunity to get up close and personal to one of her dreams. So let's set the stage. What was it like for her? So from the, the, from the from moment? Start? Okay. Yes, please. So for, to start with, uh, we surprised her at her performing arts camp here locally and told her she was going to the Tonys. She didn't know. So a group of us got together. We had signs. We had a red carpet. We had everything in front of all the campers. She's a camp counselor at a, a performing arts camp. She had transportation to the Tony Awards. She got to be along the red carpet to see all the celebrities come in. She got some photos taken during the um, Tony Awards of her in front of the the signs. She even got um, some photographs with some of her favorite actresses. So after that, they had a fun free day in New York, and then they came back the following day. So when she goes, I take it, it takes the edge off her illness. It does. I think that what happens with the wish is it gives them an opportunity. A lot of times, what, the way I explain it is, for some families, there's a lot of darkness because of that illness. They are going through so much that there's not a lot of good things coming their way. They've just been through so much. So this gives them an opportunity to take the focus off the illness, the doctors, the shots, the whatever is going on, treatment, those kind of things, and just focus on something that brings them joy. So for her, it was the Tonys. Like she's very into performing arts. So she had that opportunity to, you know, feel special and to, to, to do something that is in her, in her normal routine, but it's something she's dreamt of. So it was a wonderful opportunity. These wishes are um, a catalyst for health. They are, are something that that really makes a difference. If you don't mind, I'll sh share a couple of metrics that we we did with our impact study. 
So 90% of medical providers said that a wish increases a child's compliance with treatment. So think about that. Of all of these wish kids, 90% of those wish kids were better about their treatment just because they knew they had something to look forward to and they were excited about it and they wanted to do well so they could be on their wish. Another really important metric would be 94% of wish alums said their wish made them feel joyful, confident, and hopeful for their future. So in that situation with our wish kid that went to the Tonys, this is an opportunity where she can think about her being one day and a person in the audience or maybe winning a Tony or being part of that that experience. And last one I'll just leave with leave it leave with you is 94, 95% of parents said they saw their child's emotional well-being improve through the wish experience. So that is an opportunity to just bring some joy to the kids that are going through so much due to their illness and their situation. And the one thing that's really important we want to make sure people know is it doesn't always just bring joy to the child. It brings joy to the family and sometimes even to the community to be part of a wish. So when we were at the performing arts camp and all those kids got to be part of it, they were so excited. They were just so excited to be part of just a small part of her celebrating being able to go. Explain the impact on the family. So the impact on the family can be multiple things. So during when you have a child that's diagnosed with a critical illness, you know, think about all the things you'd go through. You know, there's, you know, all of a sudden, uh, you know that your child has a critical illness. There's uh, maybe financial concerns. There are, you know, there's already medical situations. Day to day, you're wondering what's going to be happening with your child. Um, you know, what's the next treatment plan? Are they going to have good, good results, bad results? A lot of times, it's marital stress. The kids are, are not feeling like they're normal kids because they're stuck in the house when their siblings are out playing. They've got to change their routines. A lot of them can't go to school because they're on, in hospice or not, sorry, not hospice. They're in the hospital. Sometimes they're in hospice even, but um, there's a lot of strains that go on to these families that are going through so much. So we do a, our part to just bring a little joy and hope, hopefully create some lifelong memories for these families. And then for staff, what does it do for staff and volunteers? So for staff, I think every time we have an opportunity to be part of a WISH, I mean, we're part of it in creating it and, and, and doing all the behind the scenes. But every time we hear the joy that comes afterward or we see the photos from the WISHes, it's, it's heartwarming, I'll tell you, that it... It really changes your perspective on life because we complain about this or we complain about that. When we meet these wish families and they're so inspiring, they just change our life because they have so many things going on and they don't complain. So how can we complain? So I think it's really inspiring for our wish team or our whole Make-A-Wish staff and also our volunteers. Our volunteers are incredible. So they get, uh, as a volunteer, you get firsthand um First opportunity to be around the wish kids, like you do an interview with them in person a lot of times, and you, you get to be part of the wishes sometimes. And I'll say that there are so many of our volunteers that stay on so long because they love it so much. It is an incredible experience. All of the kids are so inspirational. And you've had as young as two years old up to nearly 18. So for, to be referred, you have to re be referred be before you turn 18. We have a few years after that to be able to finish the, the wish if we haven't granted it before 18. So just the most important thing is being referred before they're 18. So do you have any in the hospital because they're too sick to, to leave the hospital? We definitely do. But what we do with those situations is we find something that will bring them joy. So on, on those situations, if they are in a more severe medical situation and they aren't able to leave the hospital, then we try to find out what would make them the most comfortable or what would bring them joy. So for instance, I've done a few different wishes where maybe we, they might had a favorite, uh, YouTubers are very popular right now. <laughs> um, so they may have a favorite YouTuber. And so maybe we'll reach out through our national department and see if maybe that person would be available at least for a virtual opportunity with that wish child. I've done other things where if they're really little, they might want a, their favorite princess to come visit them or, you know, just whatever will bring them joy. So it's really just trying to figure out what's going to make them the most comfortable and what's going to put a smile on their face. And what have you witnessed? Oh, I've witnessed so many. Like I could, I'm very blessed. I've been with Make-A-Wish for over 11 years. And I have to say that I, every wish is just remarkable. 
from the things that you would think would be simple, just seeing the joy on someone's face. I delivered a wish on Friday and um, the wish kid was just so grateful and just so humble and so sweet. It was a, a gaming computer and he he's currently going through treatment right now, but just the joy and the, the, you know, just him being so polite and sweet and kind. I just was so, I felt so blessed to be a part of such a bigger picture. How can the public at large help? So there's a few different ways that people can help. One way would be obviously wishes cost money. I wish that they didn't. That would be my wish. <laughs> but um, they do cost money. So if you ever have an opportunity, the way people could help is by donating funds directly to Make-A-Wish, Orange County and the Inland Empire, or any or whatever chapter's closest to you. That would be the, our number one way we'd need help. Another way is we do have an incredible volunteer um, community. We're always looking for more volunteers, especially volunteers that speak an additional language, because we do have families throughout our community that speak different languages. And so we're always looking for more volunteers. It's a very easy process. Both of those options are right on our website and they can sign up. If you have specific skills, like if somebody had, um, if somebody's a photographer, a videographer, or interior designer, those types of vendors, they're always so helpful to us because our team is only so knowledgeable. So it's always nice when we can get a new, fresh perspective on some of our wishes and see if they might be able to help us make them even more spectacular. Another way to help would be airline miles. So that's uh, something I mentioned earlier. So for Make-A-Wish, airline miles never expire. So you can donate your airline miles right on our website as well. Super easy, takes just a few minutes. Those miles will help us grant some of those travel related wishes. Um, and then always follow us on social media. We have Instagram, we have LinkedIn, we have Facebook. It will keep you up to date on any fun things that we have going on. Also shares a lot of our stories and helps get the word out there. We also have a couple different events that we have going on throughout the year. I'm just going to share just two of them, if I may. Uh, we have our Pickleball for Wishes event, which is on August 3rd from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Tennis and Pickleball Courts in Newport Beach. That's a super fun event. If you haven't played pickleball, it's super, it's not too hard. I, I think anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Uh, but that is a fundraiser for Make-A-Wish. It's super fun and hopefully you'll be interested in it. And then my last uh, event that I'd love to share is a beautiful e event that we have once a year, and it is our gala. So it's the Make-A-Wish Gala. It's a Parisian masquerade um, gala this year, which is going to be beautiful. It's going to be on October 19th at Balboa Bay Resort, which is in Newport Beach. So those two events would, you know, be beautiful uh, date night for anybody. And it is it definitely helps us grant more wishes. You said you have many vendors who help you. Mm -hmm. Do they give you discounts? Yeah, some. I mean, not all of our vendors are able to do that, but we appreciate their partnership. We do have some really amazing vendors in the community, partners, lifelong partners that have been just by our side the whole time. Disney is one of them. They're a great partner with us. Is that one of the most popular wishes is to go to a Disney park? So a Disney destination, I'll define it as that, is very popular. So Disney, Disneyland, Disney World, and Disney Ohlone. So all of those are very, very um, popular. And Disney does a wonderful job on advertising, so who wouldn't want to go to a Disney park? So when people here make a wish, doesn't it generally put a smile on their face knowing that you're going to help somebody? So when I meet people and I say I work for Make-A-Wish, majority of the people will be like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky. That's amazing. I love that. I saw this story on ESPN or I saw this on that. And then sometimes people are like, oh my gosh, how do you do that? But I just have to remind them what we're doing is so important and that it really does make a huge impact on these kids and their families. And it is a true honor to work for Make-A-Wish. Thank you, Make-A-Wish, Orange County and the Inland Empire Vice President of Mission Delivery, Melissa Gallagher, for being on Impact OC. And I thank everyone for tuning in. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber. Have an impactful day. You've been listening to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping our community. Right here on Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio.